Happy eight years to this stupid bear. <laughs> You've ruined my life. And what better way to celebrate eight long years of Freddy's world domination than to not talk about him at all. Yeah, sorry, Fred boy. Pack your bags, because today we're talking about Tyken Sun's lumber company yet again. So, you're probably wondering why I'm doing another video on this fan game. And to that I say, I could probably do a third one after this is done and I'd still have more to say. There is just that much cool stuff in this game. So, I'm just gonna head on over to my It's That Good Cow and keep milking her until she's dry. Jokes aside, I actually do have some pretty cool stuff to talk about in this video. A very quick explanation for those who haven't seen my other video on this game, Tyken Sons Lumber Company is a fan-made sequel to one of Scott Cawthon's older games called Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. The big twist with Tyken Sons is that there are FNAF 4 style gameplay segments in between in-game days during the playthrough. This game quickly became my favorite FNAF fan game for a multitude of reasons, and I ended up making a video on it quite early into my YouTube career. During that video, I decided to not talk about the custom night, as I thought it was too cool of a bonus to spoil. However, today's video is all about that custom night. It's been like four months. If you were gonna play the game because of my video, you would have already done it at this point. So I have no shame spoiling everything about this insanely cool mode. So what? I'm just gonna make a full video on a custom night that's part of a bigger game? What's the point of that? Well, not quite. During my playthrough for the first video, I ended up spending a lot more time during custom night than I thought I would. I did all the challenges in an afternoon and started making my own custom challenges shortly thereafter. Like with every custom night mode, you've got to try the hardest possible difficulty at least once, just to get a feel for the challenge. I tried the 1422 mode a couple times, and big surprise, I didn't get very far. However, I wanted to see a complete run of the challenge for my own sake. So I took to YouTube and looked it up. Nothing. This game had been out for years, and not a single person had ever beaten the 1422 mode. Was it even possible? That was my first question that raced through my head upon finding out that no one had ever done it before. Surely, if challenges like 50-20 were possible, this would be as well, right? While there has never ever been a full run of this challenge completed, a YouTuber by the name of Costa Vesta was grinding out the challenge hard back in 2019, closer to when the game came out. While he never actually beat it, he uploaded his two best attempts of the challenge to YouTube in hopes that others would try to complete it with him, as well as just archiving his best attempts. His two best times at the challenge clocked in at 159 and 218 respectively. And god, these videos are stressful to watch. Just knowing the pure difficulty of this challenge and seeing every move being made had me on the edge of my seat. After snooping around these videos for a bit, I continued to work on my own video and stopped thinking about the challenge for a long time. However, a couple months later, after my video actually came out, I decided to check again and see if anyone had finally beaten it. Nothing still. Not even my video blowing up with millions and millions of views could do anything. I wanted to see this challenge complete. I was too invested at this point. So, about two weeks ago, I reached out to Costa in his YouTube comment section and asked him if he knew if anyone had ever beaten the 1422 challenge before, just in case it had happened off the grid or something. We talked for a bit in the comments before moving over to Twitter DMs. Two days after he messaged me on Twitter, I received a notification on my phone that made me genuinely gasp out loud. Like, actually. Thank you for taking interest. In fact, you have motivated me to play this mode way more. So if I could please ask you to wait a bit, as I have gotten a new personal best. Costa had gotten a new best time at the challenge years after his previous best attempt. 2.43 was the new best time, which was a massive improvement over the older 2.18 run. I gave Costa Vesta around a week to compile his research into a Google Doc, and just like that he sent me the link to the Tyken Sons 1422 mode Bible. Well, he called it a guide, but Bible sounds cooler. Anyway, with a new time achieved, a full guide being written, and both of our interests in the challenge being at an all-time high, I knew it was time to make this video. So today, you, yes you, will learn the complete ins and outs of this insanely hard FNAF challenge. I'm gonna finally go over every custom night animatronic after teasing it in the last video on this game. I'm gonna talk about the best strats for this challenge, and to wrap it all up, I'll be telling every one of you watching how you can try this challenge for yourself. My goal here is to finally have someone complete this challenge or die trying. Costa's full Google Doc will be linked in the description if you want to reference it once you're done watching this video. And I highly suggest you check him out if you want to see some seriously insane Tyken Sons gameplay. With all that out of the way, strap in folks, because we're about to enroll you into 1422-101. Okay, before we get into the specifics here, I just want to talk about how cool this menu is for the custom night mode. 
because I doubt I'll ever be able to talk about it anywhere else. The way the challenges are just there at the bottom of the screen as part of the overall UI works really well. No need for arrows or separate screens. Everything is just there. The way the character portraits spring to life as you move them from 0 to 22 is also such a goddamn cool touch. More fan games need to do this. It adds so much personality to what is a very simple menu. Anyway, enough gushing. It's time to get into each of these animatronics. First, I'll quickly go over the characters that show up in the base game again. I won't spend that much time on them since I already did that in the previous video, but there is some new info regarding some of these characters that I feel is important to bring up. Chip them out 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 all work pretty much the exact same way. They show up at one of the two windows, and you have to close the curtain to make them go away. However, thanks to Costa's document, I can share some other details regarding these characters that I wasn't 100% sure of before. Chip them out 1.0 and 3.0 have different knocking sounds, which wouldn't be that noteworthy, but when we're talking about an insanely hard challenge, such as 1422, it's kind of important to know which character is present at all times. is an interesting case though. Despite the custom night description saying otherwise, 2.0 has no knocking sound when he's out a window, or at least not a sound that's easily noticeable. I don't really know to be honest. I went into custom night and turned every character off except for 2.0, and I really couldn't hear any knocking when he was out a window. If there is any knocking, it's way too quiet to hear anyway, so ignore what the game tells you. You won't be able to tell when 2.0 is at the window. Now would be a good time to bring up the character kill timers. This is the amount of time a character gives you to deal with them before they jump scare you. This changes depending on difficulty, but for our purposes we're talking about the 1422 mode only. For example, while Chipham at 3.0 shows up at the window far more often than Chipham at 1.0, he also gives you way more time to deal with him. Since 1.0 gives you less time, if you can remember their unique knock noises, you can always remember to deal with 1.0 first, since he gives you less time to do so. The final thing to note about these characters is that the longer it takes for you to get to the window, the longer you have to keep the curtain shut to get rid of them. Ideally, we want them gone as soon as they show up, and if you do that, it should only take around 1-2 to two seconds to get them to leave. Next up are the front door characters, starting with Spring Crab. Spring Crab will show up at the front door at random, and you have to shine your flashlight back and forth between the two different windows to get them to leave. According to Costa's testing, it takes around 10 to 11 flashes for them to leave on average. Nightmare Chipper works pretty much the exact same way when they're at the front door, but they take less flashes to get rid of and are typically more aggressive than Spring Crab. This is where I talk about their second phase, but no one has ever done a 1422 run long enough to reach their second phase, so... Okay, real quick. Later during the night, Nightmare Chipper will leave the front door and enter your bedroom. This is both a good and bad thing. Now you don't have to deal with him at the front door anymore, which is great, but now every time you go upstairs, there's a chance they'll be waiting on the bed. This wouldn't be so bad, however you have to be in your bedroom alone to end the night. So this character really adds another layer of stress to the end of a run. Cbuild.exe will say a voice line when he's about to show up. From the time you hear his voice line, you have about 30 seconds to clear the windows and front door of all enemies. We'll talk about this more later, during the 1422 section, but you have to make sure you clear all threats before proceeding with this guy. Anyway, once you do that, you have to return to the living room area and shut the lights off. Once the light is off, Seabill will walk in front of the door, and you must wait until he leaves to turn the light back on. If you don't shut the light off in time, or turn the light on too early, he'll jump scare you and end the night. While the lights are off, Phantom Chipomat has a chance to jump scare you and drain 50% of the total battery power. During a 1422 run, that chance turns into pretty much 100% every single time, so be prepared to deal with recharging your flashlight a lot. With the base game characters out of the way, it's finally time to talk about the custom night exclusive characters. Most of these guys don't add a lot to the overall challenge on their own, but when they're all active at the same time, now that's a different story. First up, we have the Rockstar characters. You see that mini-map at the bottom of the screen during the game? Well, if you weren't paying attention to it before, you sure as hell better start now. As during the entire night, you will see three different characters in active positions on the map. They will walk back and forth in front of the left window, the right window, and finally the stairs. If you run into one of these characters on the map, they will jump scare you and end your run. On lower difficulties, they aren't always present on the map, only occasionally showing up. However, on max difficulty, get ready to look at the minimap the entire night, because they never leave. And they force you to time every single one of your movements. This adds a whole new challenge to the game, that was entirely absent before, and makes every single move you make that much more meaningful. Costa recommends you do a full night with only these three characters on max difficulty, in order to get a good feeling for the movement during the challenge. You don't get to decide when you want to move anymore. Now you're on their schedule, 
And that's honestly one of my favorite additions to this custom knife. It makes everything feel that much more arcadey and chaotic. Big Bruce 2 will play a saw noise at random. When you hear this noise, you have to move to a different part of the house. For example, if you're at the left window and you hear the saw, you gotta move back to the living room or else you die. You have about half a second after the saw sound ends to make your move, which gives you enough time to account for the Rockstar characters on the map. Even with that extra time though, Big Bruce combined with the Rockstars is still a super hard challenge and will 100% force you into super bad situations. Fun Fungal, similar to the Chippo Mats, can show up at either of the windows. Just like 2.0, he makes no sound when he arrives at the window, so you won't know when he's there unless you see him. Unlike the Chippo Mats, however, you can't just close the curtain to get rid of him. You have to flash your light repeatedly to get him to leave. This can put you in situations where both a Chippo Mat and Fun Fungal are at a window at the same time, making you both close the curtain and flash your light, making you spend longer times at the window than normal. Thankfully, Fun Fungal has an easier to deal with kill timer compared to the others, so you can usually deal with both if you're ever put in that situation. Which if you're playing 1422 mode, you'll be put in that situation many times, get used to it. Chipper will spawn a stock image PNG of lumber on your screen, and you have to hover your mouse over to collect it. It's, it's stupid, it's really stupid. <laughs> if you take too long, he'll jump scare you. Very simple character with a very simple mechanic. However, the lumber actually ends up being a very good timer for the start of 1422 mode, which I'll get into later. Finally, we have Toy. Believe it or not, this little toy is a genuine run killer on higher difficulties. He resides in the bedroom, and you'll be able to check on him when you use your flashlight up there. He will attempt to run away from his spot in the room, and when he starts his cycle, you can do one of two things. You can let him run away and deal with him right then, or you can flash at him before he can move and stall him just a bit longer. Stalling him isn't a 100% reset, and it just gives you a bit more time before he actually moves. In 1422 mode, Toy will stand up again right away after you stall him once, giving you around two extra actions before he will eventually run downstairs. Once he's gone from his spot upstairs, you have to go to the living room to shut the light off, until you hear him run back up stairs again. So why is this stupid little tiny puny robot that you could flick and he'd probably go flying to the goddamn sun such a run killer? Well, for one, he's extremely easy to forget in the grand scheme of the challenge, as he makes no noise when he leaves his spot and can easily slip away at the worst of times. For example, if you're doing a wide sweep of every window because Seabill is about to attack you and you hadn't checked the bedroom in a bit, there's a very high chance Toy escaped without you even thinking about it. Another reason this guy is so annoying is that he forces you to shut your light off more than normal, which means less time to deal with active threats and more time for good old Phantom Chipomat to steal 50% of your flashlight power. All of these things combined make Toy the most annoying custom night character to deal with during 1422 mode. And that's the custom night characters. You can probably see why they'd be such an issue when combined all together, as it just makes an already hectic gameplay loop even more chaotic. Now that you're familiar with every single threat you'll have to deal with, it's time to talk about the 1422 mode challenge specifically, and all the troubles it brings. Let's get into it. Before we start, I just want to mention that I tried this run myself a couple times and, uh, yeah, I got absolutely nowhere with it. <laughs> Seriously. This video would not be possible without Costa Vesta and his insane work getting world records for this challenge. Trust me, the absolute smile on my face when I saw he got a brand new record because of my video proposition getting him interested again was from ear to ear. Let's start with Costa's theories for potential strategies for this run. These are ideas on how to make it easier that have not been fully explored or put to good use yet. If anyone watching thinks they could expand on these, then by all means, feel free to give it a shot. Theory 1. By chilling at the left or right window as much as possible during the entire night, Chip Out 1.0 and 3.0 cannot spawn. 2.0 and Fun Fungal can, but this removes two threats that were previously there. Whether or not this can be expanded into any meaningful strategy is yet to be seen. Theory 2. Constantly running back upstairs and downstairs to keep flashing Toy so he can't move from his spot. Costa is unsure if this will work 100%, but it is a potential way to keep Toy from being as much of a threat. Finally, we have Theory 3. Similar to Theory 1, but for the characters at the front window. This is also not 100%, as it seems sometimes it helps with stalling, spring crab, and nightmare chipper, but other times it doesn't work at all. This feels like the weakest of the three theories, but there may be some potential strategies to work out from this idea. Alright, with those out of the way, here is what we know so far about the 1422 run, and the best way to deal with everything as of now. Things are always subject to change as we find new information, so please check the Google Doc in the description for the most up-to-date changes to the strategy. Okay, let's dive in. Every night in Tyken Sun starts with a short cooldown period. 
Nothing will spawn in or attack you during this time, except for the characters that are on the map. This is where the chipper lumber timing thing that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Once the first lumber spawns on screen, you know that the night has officially begun. Around when the fourth lumber spawns in on screen is when enemies should start spawning in at the two windows. You should also expect knocking from Chipper Mat 3.0 around the time of the sixth or seventh lumber. From here, you can deal with the threats that appear at the windows accordingly. Once the active threats are taken care of, it's recommended that you go upstairs and recharge your flashlight at this point to get that extra battery you will need, along with getting a good opportunity to flash toy before it can move downstairs. This next part of the run has a bit of RNG involved, and whether you land that good RNG will determine how hard the run is going to be going forward. Keep checking the windows until you hear cbuild.exe. When you hear them, go to the front window and check on both Spring Crab and Nightmare Chipper. The hope here is that when you go to the door, both of them will be there and you'll be able to kill two birds with one stone. If only one is there, it's much more likely that the other will spawn in at a super inconvenient time, and having both gone before you shut off the lights ensures that you can't be killed by either of them right after you're done with Seabill. While the light is off, no characters can kill you, but since you have to repel characters away to make progress in this game, that doesn't really matter much. What does matter though, is when the lights are off and you're dealing with Seabill, or the toy for that matter, all the characters waiting around you will lower their kill timers down so that they will be closer to jump scaring you when you turn on the lights. This is where character priorities come into play. Like I explained earlier in regards to Chip'em at 1.0 and 3.0, different characters have a higher chance to kill you than others do. The best way to go about dealing with the characters is in order of how low their kill timers are. This is what Costa believes is the best order as of now. First, you should deal with Nightmare Chipper as soon as possible. He has the lowest kill timer of any character in this situation and is easily the biggest threat. Having Spring Crab show up at the window at the same time would also be ideal so you can kill two birds with one stone yet again. The biggest issue here, however, comes down to your battery life in Phantom Chipomat. As we talked about earlier, on higher difficulties it's pretty much 100% guaranteed that you will get jump scared by Phantom Chipomat when the lights are off. Since he takes away 50% of your battery every time, if you have any amount under half, you will be stuck on an empty charge which is obviously a bad situation when the character with the lowest kill timer has to be flashed. Luckily, 1.0 and 2.0, who are the next characters to deal with, only have to have the curtain shut on them. So if you have any battery life left, you can safely use it on the front door characters with little to no issues. This seems to be the best way to go about it from my personal opinion after watching runs and reading the document. If you have any flashlight power left after losing the 50%, use it to deal with the front door characters. If you have no flashlight power left, you should go to the window you've been away from for the longest amount of time and hold it shut for a few seconds before going back upstairs to recharge the battery. While you're up there, make sure to flash Toy again to stall him or check his position. Then make your way back downstairs. You should be able to play like normal for a bit and deal with a few characters. But after around three or so actions, you should turn your light off to deal with Toy, since by this point he will probably have left the bedroom. Toy takes a lot less time to deal with than Seabill, so you should be able to do this without getting jump scared and losing no power, if you're lucky. However, this is where the solid info on the run kind of ends, as this is as far as Costa has ever gotten. He typically dies to Toy, since he's the most annoying character to deal with. Hopefully this has given you some insight into this challenge and just how hard it is. However, we're not done yet. Like I said, I want to raise a community effort for someone, anyone to beat this challenge. I have a very strong feeling it's possible, given that enough people can figure out the best way to deal with certain situations. So, the remainder of this video will be a guide on how you can start playing 1422 mode yourself, in the hopes that one of you watching at home can step up to the plate and get some serious work done. Alright, let's go! Tykin Sons is a long game, and you have to beat all of the main story to get a shot at trying 1422 mode. So to speed up that process for you all, here is a quick guide on how to download the game and start playing Custom Night right now. Go to the link in the description and download Tykin Sons from the Game Jolt page. Once you have the game downloaded, go back to the description and download the save file link there as well. Once you have both the save file and the game downloaded, press the Windows key plus R on your keyboard to bring up the Run search bar. From here, type in percent app data percent and press Enter. This should open up File Explorer and show you a bunch of folders. If you have ever played a game made in Click Team before on your computer, you should see a folder called MMF Applications. If you don't see this folder, just open up Tykin Sons and play through the opening section of the game until it lets you play on your own. The folder should create itself along with a save file. Open up the MMF Applications folder and place the save file you downloaded into it. If you already have a save file for Tykin Sons in that folder, make sure to delete it before you add the new one. Once the save file is in there, you should be ready to go. 
Just open up the game, press the spacebar as soon as you enter the overworld, and talk to Tyke. Then click on bedtime when he asks you what you want to do. This will open up the custom night menu, and you can mess around with it from here. If you want to practice for 1422 mode, I recommend you try all the pre-made challenges, as they will get you used to all the characters and how to deal with them in less intense situations. From there, you can refer to the guide that Cost of Vesta made in the description to see the best ways to build up to the 1422 mode. Side note, but Costa did beat 1222 mode during the production of this video, so if you want a challenge that will be hard, but is 100% possible, every character but the front door characters is doable. And that's pretty much it. I've told you all the information, and now it's up to the community to get this thing beaten. If you get a new best time, stream the challenge, or hell, even beat it, please at me on Twitter at oh yeah, bruv, and I will be there right away to check it out. This is my favorite FNAF fan game of all time, and I really just want to see this impossible challenge finally finished after so many years. Anyway, happy 8th anniversary to FNAF. It's been a wild ride, but I can't wait to see what comes next for this crazy ass franchise. Maybe this wasn't the anniversary video you were expecting from me, but from someone who pretty much only talks about FNAF fan content, it's only fitting that I talk about my favorite FNAF fan game one more time for this special occasion. I've been Aya, and have a good one everybody.